Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I'm testing an auto plate changing system for the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. As far as I can tell, automatic build plate changing on the A1 Mini started with Swap Mod. That was the original design that proved the concept actually works. In October 2024, Swap Systems launched the first Swap Mod A1 Mini kit on Kickstarter and is currently selling it for 70 euros on their website as a DIY kit. It includes bolts, nuts, and some hardware, but you still need to print all the parts yourself and assemble the entire system on your own. After that, we started seeing a wave of clones show up. In January 2025, a free fully DIY plate changer project for the A1 Mini on Maker World. By mid-2025, more commercial options started popping up. Printflow 3D released a higher-end kit for the A1, priced at 249 euros with two plates included. On the lower end, Hicktop released an A1 kit priced at $92, using 3D printed parts and including no plates. Later, in August 2025, InnoCube 3D released a very similar 3D printed kit, also with no plates, priced at $100, different names, some for the A1 and some for the A1 Mini, but identical mechanics. They all rely on the same front and rear grabbers and use G-code to change plates between prints. While all these kits are DIY focused, rely on 3D printed parts and usually include no plates or just one or two extra plates. By the end of 2025, Chidu Systems sent us their version of an A1 mini plate changer. It's priced at $80, comes with all injection molded parts and includes four plates. Double-sided PEI plates usually cost around $15 to $20 each. So buying four plates alone already puts you in the $60 to $80 range, which is basically the price of this entire Chitu plate cycler kit. To be clear, even though Chitu sent this kit to us for free and has been a long-term supporter of our channel, including providing other products like filaments and their Chitu Box Pro Slicer, this is still a clone of the original swap mod concept. The purpose of this review is not to suggest that cloning within the 3D printing industry is ethically right, but to evaluate whether this relatively small investment can genuinely turn the A1 Mini into a continuous printing workhorse. As with all my testing videos, I'll point out any issues or downsides I encounter along the way. I'll also include links to both this kit and the original swap mod in the video description, so you can decide for yourself which option makes more sense for you and aligns better with your own ethical perspective. With that said, let's get started. The kit comes in a relatively small box, roughly the same size as the A1 Mini's footprint. Inside, it includes all the injection molded parts and everything is designed to be ready to use without requiring you to print any additional components. The standard $79 kit includes four build plates, each with the handle already installed. These are double-sided sheets, and if you prefer the smooth PEI surface, you can simply unscrew the handle and flip the plate. Installation starts by mounting the cable holder and the build plate grabber at the back of the machine. The main component of the kit is the spring-loaded plate holder. It comes in two parts with four springs. You place the springs on the base, set the plate holder on top, and then insert the adjustment screw. Make a few turns, but don't tighten it all the way yet, since this screw is used later to fine-tune the height. Once assembled, the plate holder snaps onto the back of the printer. This next step is the most important part of the installation. The plate grabber needs to catch the plate at exactly the right height. Without any adjustment, you can see the plate sits too high and can't be grabbed properly. Tightening the screw lowers the plate holder. It's a gradual process, very similar to manually leveling a bed. After a few small adjustments, the grabber starts catching the plate reliably. To confirm the setting, I stacked additional plates on top to simulate a full load and made sure the extra weight didn't push the plate holder down too far. The height stayed consistent and looked correct from multiple angles. Next, the front mechanism is installed. This part is responsible for removing the plate from the magnetic bed. It connects using a cable that's very similar to an old style remote camera shutter cable. The other end of the cable mounts near the top of the printer. When a print finishes, the G-code moves the print head to bump this trigger, which lifts the grabber and removes the plate. The final step is snapping two pushers onto the bottom of the bed, one on the left and one on the right. Once those are in place, the physical installation is complete. I'll start testing this setup with eight plates and then push it further later in the video. Let's take a look at their software. They offer both a web-based version and a Windows version, if you prefer to work completely offline without uploading your files to their site. 
There's also a self-test file you can use to test the plate swapping mechanism. I'll download that file and print it from Bamboo Studio. This is running at two times speed, and the plate swapping motion itself is intentionally slow to ensure reliability. After the first swap, I'll speed it up and show the process from different angles. So far, everything seems to be working fine. Next, I'll start slicing some models. Instead of sending the print directly to the printer, you need to export one by one. Once all the files are exported, you can open them in their software. I currently have six plates loaded, and the total print time adds up to almost 10 hours. I can change the number of copies for each plate, and you can see the total time and filament usage update accordingly. Now I've increased it to 10 plates, and the total time is over 18 hours, with about 342 grams of filament required. Inside the settings dialog, you can change the name of this grouped file. If you want to run the job continuously, essentially repeating the same batch over and over, you can set the loop count here. If I enter 99, it would keep printing for about 75 days. Of course, you need to load more plates before the last one is used, as well as change the filament. I'll change it back to 1 and export the file. A message pops up saying the new file may contain errors. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I'll save it anyway and open it again in the slicer to send it to the printer. When I open the file, it looks like it treats the job as a single plate print, with the plate changing G-code inserted in between. That means selecting print all or print plate behaves the same way. I'll send the print and see what happens. It starts with the first plate. This is just a small test square that takes about three minutes to print. I like starting with something short so I can confirm the plate changing works without needing to babysit it for too long. I'll let it continue through the rest of the batch.
the system runs smoothly overall, except for the last plate. It looks like the plate didn't drop low enough for the grabber to catch it. I'll manually load a plate and investigate after this batch finishes. Once the final print completes, it still can't grab the last plate on the tray. Aside from that issue, the rest of the batch looks fine. I rerun the testing G code to figure out the cause, but the last plate still can't be grabbed. I noticed that when dropping the last plate without other plates stacked on top, the small fin on the plate holder prevents it from dropping all the way down. I have to apply a bit of force to push it fully into position. With two or more plates stacked, the extra weight helps push it down, but once it reaches the final plate, it's simply too light and the fin blocks it. It looks like I need an additional 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters of clearance, so I lightly sand the fin down. After that, even when I slowly drop the last plate, it reaches the bottom properly. I clean off the dust, rerun the testing G code, and it works fine. I push it further by loading all 12 plates and printing 12 small squares. At this point, I've identified the cause of the issue and I'm pretty confident in this setup now. As expected, this 12 plate setup cycled successfully. Then, I'll print some multicolor models using the AMS, but without creating too much waste by choosing models that are already color separated. For example, this BART model can be printed using seven plates. Only the eyes require two colors, and I'll print three of them at a time. I'll slice all the plates first. Since we can't send all plates directly to the printer, as the plate changing G-code still needs to be added by the software, I'll export the files and reopen them using that software. We have seven plates here. To avoid color contamination, I'll rearrange the order and print lighter colors before darker ones. I'll generate the combined file and open it in Bamboo Studio. As before, this batch will be treated as a single plate in Bamboo Studio, so it won't visually show the plate changes. However, in the preview, you can see the colors being printed one by one. Let's send the print to the printer. During the yellow print, the filament ran out and the print paused, but we can simply replace the filament as usual and resume the job. All seven plates finished successfully, and the filament waste was minimal. Of course, the downside is that you need to spend some time gluing the parts together, but the result is still great. The waste is significantly lower compared to printing all colors at once, which would require the AMS to frequently cut and poop during color changes. Next, I'll print another Batman model. This one is also sliced by color and only uses four plates. The brown color is a wood-filled PLA that absorb moisture, so I'll reprint that color later. The cape and head are printed with white eyes, so that plate only has minimal color changes near the top. After that, I'll reprint the brown parts using regular PLA. This print was also very successful. The white eyes look good, although removing the supports from the main part takes some time. Overall, the final result is still very nice, and I find myself enjoying this color printing method since the filament waste is much lower. I also wanted to see what happens if I forget to reload a plate before the batch finishes. 
By default, the firmware does not enable build plate detection, so the printer would continue printing directly onto the magnetic sheet. To avoid this, you need to go to Settings, then Print Options, scroll to the second page, and enable the build plate position detection feature. Once enabled, the printer will pause and notify you that there is no build plate installed, allowing you to load one and resume the job normally. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this kit, starting with the pros. 1. The kit is well made, the injection molded parts are high quality, and since everything is included, assembly is quick and straightforward. Compared to a DIY kit that can require 10 hours or more just to print all the parts, plus additional time for assembly, this is a significantly more convenient, ready-to-use, out-of-the-box solution. 2. I was able to load all 12 plates on the A1 Mini and have it work flawlessly. I could send a batch of prints, come back the next day, and find all the prints finished and ready. I did encounter a last plate swapping issue during my early testing, which I'll talk more about later. 3. Like the original swap mod, they offer a browser-based tool that lets you combine sliced files. They also provide a Windows version that can be used completely offline. This may be important for users who prefer not to have their files uploaded through a third-party website. 4. Multicolor printing with separated colors becomes much more practical. Since you don't have to wait for one color to finish before changing plates, the overall process of printing each color on its own plate is smoother, and the waste generated by using multiple plates is minimal. 5. The value of this kit is hard to beat. In addition to all the injection molded parts, it comes with four plates for a total of $80. An extra set of four plates costs $40, and they all come with handles. That means a full 12 plate setup like the one you saw in this video would cost around $160. Now for the cons. 1. The only issue I encountered was last plate swapping reliability during early testing. Initially, I tried adjusting the height screw, but the real cause turned out to be the fin on the plate holder being slightly too close. The fix was simple. About three minutes of sanding, roughly 0.2 millimeters, completely solved the problem, and I had no issues after that. This may be due to small dimensional differences between batches of build plates. Chitu systems should verify that the plates are at spec. Plates that are 0.5 to 1 millimeter undersized would still work fine, but even a small oversize can cause swapping issues. 2. The materials you can print are limited by the A1 Mini itself. With a maximum bed temperature of only 80 degrees Celsius, printing ABS or other materials that require higher bed temperatures and a stable ambient temperature may not be possible. After adding this kit, the machine's footprint becomes larger, and it needs space to push plates out, which makes enclosing the printer even more challenging. 3. Because Bamboo Lab printer firmware is closed source, the workflow is limited. You can only combine multiple files into a single job, upload it to the printer, and let it run in sequence. Once the print has started, you can't change the number of copies, cancel individual plates, or add more plates until the entire job finishes, or you stop it manually. Overall, this kit works, and it works very well. The only issue I ran into was the fin clearance on the plate holder, which needed a bit of sanding. That said, a fully 3D printed solution would likely require some, if not more, tweaking to achieve the same level of reliability. In this consumer 3D printing market, cloning and reverse engineering have become so common that many new printers are clearly modeled after Bamboo Labs lineup, from their AMS to the X and P series, and this year even the entry-level A series, almost every Bamboo Lab product seems to have a twin from a different brand. This kit exists in that same reality. While I'm not suggesting that this trend is ethically ideal, execution still matters, and in terms of build quality and real-world performance, this is a solid, well-executed clone. If your goal is to turn an A1 Mini into a continuous printing workhorse, the Qi2 Plate Cycler delivers on that promise. As mentioned earlier in the video, I included links to both the Qi2 Plate Cycler and the original swap mod in the description, so you can decide which option makes more sense for you and better aligns with your own priorities and ethical stance. Please also check out my website, auroratechchannel.com, which tracks prices for major 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines to help you find the best deals. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.